All right, I hope you're doing well today. Today I want to talk about a quick insight that I learned not too long ago, but has really helped me go from an introvert to someone who can more easily speak to people. Now, I'm not going to pretend I'm this, you know, insane, charismatic, who can speak to absolutely anyone and attract anyone. But I've really made a great journey that I think I've improved a lot. And if you're someone who's more at the beginning of the journey, who's more of an introvert, I really think this, this concept can change how you see the world. All right, and this concept is the concept of condemnation, right? And it's going to change your life in two ways. The first way, it's going to change how you see the world. It's going to change the world from your eyes. And then it's going to change how other people fit you into their lives. Now, the first way it's going to change your life, it's because when you have a mindset of condemnation, condemnation basically means to blame. It's a negative attitude. It's giving, it, it's basically hating the world and saying that, the world is doing all this stuff to me. And I used to, to be filled with this belief. Like my mind was completely filled with the belief that, oh, why is this happening to me? Why am I getting in trouble? Why can't I attract anyone? Why can't I speak to people? Why is, you know, my friends are the ones who are getting crushed on, but not me. Like, why am I always the one who doesn't get lucky? Why am I always the one who just, you know, I don't ever get what's beautiful in life. And I felt like just the world was punishing me. You know, I mean, it wasn't all the time, but it was just this constant undertone of negativity. And because you see, you don't really see your world. Okay, quick thing to understand. The world around you, it's not actually the world around you, okay? It's, it's weird, but the way that you see your, your eyes are basically an extension of your brain. Like literally, biologically, your eyes are just extensions of your brain, right? And you get all this information, you get it from all your senses, but that's not exactly what goes into your head. What goes into your head is all this information from the world, but it has to be filtered through your beliefs. And if you've ever gone bowling or something, your beliefs are kind of like the guardrails that you put up when you, when you actually can't bowl, right? And to prevent, it, prevent the ball from going in the gully, the, your beliefs are like the guardrails that keep your head thinking in this certain way, right? And if you have a belief of that you're... Um, the world is against you, right? The world is horrible. You can't win. Then you're never going to see anything that could be a win as a win. And the way that that, ex that was explained to me that really helped me understand is like your beliefs are like a scale, right? And you have many, many, many thousands of beliefs. And to generalize, right? I'm just going to create a general belief, right? Imagine there's this belief right here, right? And it's like this... If you ever have like a seesaw or something like that, right? You have something in the middle and then you have the balance, right? And on each side are buckets of good reactions or good experiences and the other side is bad experiences. And the more bad experiences you have or like the more, if you have more bad experiences than good experiences, what it's going to do is shift that scale downwards and you're going to see like if that scale was um, from the very negative side to the very positive side of am I a winner? And if you have a lot of negative, uh, a lot of negative experiences, it's going to shift the scale down and you're going to think, yeah, I'm just not a winner, right? And so when you get information, when you even could make, when you're making progress, but you don't get like a result, you're going to see that as a loss. Even when someone who had the belief that they're a winner would have seen that as a win. Right, you would have seen that as a loss because you just have this preconceived, like it's almost like you are already made the decision to decide that it is a loss before you've even, you know, understood the information. If that makes sense, right? And you gotta break that belief. You gotta break the belief that the world is against you. And the way that I've been able to do this is just to imagine yourself as a winner. And it seems kind of stupid, but it works because. Your mind is made up on experiences. Like the reason why you think two plus two equals four is because you've heard it so many times. It's not because it's just logic. It's because it's been proven thousands of times to you that two plus two equals four. But if you can convince your mind through experiences of imaginary, even if it's imaginary, imaginary experiences of you being a winner, then slowly your mindset of the world will start to change. All right. So that's the first way to change your world is to kind of see your life is always a win. See everything as progress and just loved your life, right? I find that I enjoy my life a lot more when I see nature, when I
when I see beautiful things. So keep that in mind. Try to open your windows. Try to wake up with the sunrise. All right, so now that's kind of the basic thing. I think everybody understands that. But what's what I learned a couple of weeks ago, or not a couple of weeks ago, like a good good while ago, that changed my path on my social life, right, was that you should never blame or have negative thoughts towards other people. And it seems obvious, but we never practice this. I think genuinely, like if you look at me in the eyes, you're telling me that if you have a problem, right, and you're in a group, you don't blame another person. You don't blame the other people. It's very rare that we actually take responsibility of something and don't blame other people. And the thing is that if you're always someone who, has, who who blames other people and then has this idea in your mind that it's not your fault, that it's other people's fault. Oh, why did this happen to me? Why did I get placed in this group? You know, like if you have that victim mentality, your life will never be good, first of all. And then other people will always see you as a guy who's going to blame them. And that's not something that they want to go through. Like they don't want to go through a yap session of you just degrading their self-worth. They're never going to be around you. If you're just that person who's always negative, they're never going to be or want to be around you, right? And like you can apply this to winning arguments. Like you're never going to win an argument if you just start out and like have the mindset that you're going to prove someone else wrong. Nobody wants to be proven wrong. And you're never like even if you prove your case right, like their behavior is not going to change, which is what you were after in the first place, right? An argument is you're trying to change someone else's behavior and it's stupid to go in there and just try to prove your facts. And you're like, oh, you're wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. And you degrade them like that. Because then what's really going to happen is that they are going to start defending a position that they don't really care about. Like, it's an idea that they could have easily switched in their mind if someone hadn't attacked them. But when someone attacks them for their beliefs, now they're getting defensive. And now they're saying, oh, yeah, I do this because of this and this and this. And they're listing out the reasons. And that's confirming why they believe in a certain way. You cut, they're kind of like selling themselves to the other side, right? If you're like, if you're selling something to someone, right? And they're talking about, oh, yeah, but I can get it from a competitor. And then you're like, and you start like attacking, like, why would you get it from a competitor? And they're like, well, I can get it because of this reason, this reason, this reason. They're literally selling themselves to your competitor. Does that make sense? So if you're always condemning other people, they're never going to want to be around you. And especially in arguments, you are never going to win an argument in that way. You're never going to be able to change other people's behavior. But if you can be the guy who's always accepting the responsibility, who's there all the time, who's always like, if you can always give fist bumps to other people when you're like, nah, it's all good, don't worry. Be, you're always patient with other people, but you're ruthless with yourself. Like that's my... That's the way I think about my life. I want to be ruthless with myself and patient with others. If you can do that, I promise people will be drawn to you because you're like nobody else. Everybody else is sitting there and blaming everyone else, right? And you're the person who accepts all that blame and says, no, it's all good. Don't worry, right? You're going to be different. I promise you. You don't want to be the person who's always negative. You want to be the star in other people's lives. You want to be the person who's always like this glowing emblem and they want you in like they always want to be around you because it's this bubbly like sun that goes everywhere. Be that guy. Like don't be afraid to be like, oh yeah, I'm all sad because I'm on this like sigma grind or whatever. Like that's dumb, dude. That's really dumb. You want to be cheerful. You want to be positive. You want to be the guy who everybody wants to be around. You want to be charming. And to do that, you gotta be positive. You gotta break your negative beliefs. All right. I hope this video was. I hope this video helped you understand this concept. And I um, hope this video makes the journey to go from an introvert to a charismatic a little bit faster. I wish I had learned this when I was younger. But anyway, I hope you got something from this video. Go out and conquer. And subscribe if you liked it.